Welcome to the new video on the Zeta function. In this video we will talk about the Euler product and actually derive it. You might ask, what is the Euler product? I know who Euler was, but how does the Euler product look like? And actually in this video you will understand why the Zeta function that we defined in the first video is really has really to do something with the prime numbers and maybe also with their distribution okay so let's just start off and have a look at what is the Euler product and what we want to derive now one can rewrite this uh, the zeta function which is the sum over these integers with the power of s okay you can rewrite this as an infinite product this sign is the big letter greek letter for pi okay or P for product and it was actually I think it was Euler who introduced this to math actually he also introduced the sum sign and um, which stands for Sigma for sum so the S for Sigma sum okay now here what we have a product is it's 1 over 1 minus P to the minus S and P I wrote it down here is prime number so actually what this is telling us that one can rewrite this stuff this sum as a product um, containing all the prime numbers okay and minus s this is just this s now actually this is one proof this was the proof uh, which Euler gave and there it, if it's hard for you to, to understand that please bear with me because in the next video I will show you also a way to do it easier it's not the way how you should do it but it's easier to understand and uh, to derive the Euler product representation okay so let's just do the hard way actually it's and there's only one point which is hard so let's have a look at it the first thing that I'm doing is I'm starting off with the right hand side okay it's pretty easy why not start with the right hand side and show that this is equal to this stuff now what I'm doing here is and this is a, a, a slight problem maybe to understand this this 1 over 1 minus P to the minus S now if we look at this actually one can find out that this number is always um, smaller than 1 okay because we have P to the S and actually uh, if you, we only want to look at this without complex numbers because if, if I would use complex numbers then I would have a lot of problems I'll just show you that this is true for real numbers and then actually this is also true for complex numbers now if we have 1 over P to something then you know that 1 over a prime number which starts at 2 actually has to give you a number that is pretty small not pretty small but it's, it's less than 1 and if you have something like this 1 over 1 minus something that is smaller than 1 then one could use the geometric sum okay and this is what we are doing I'm using a geometric sum for each of these parts in this product okay I write I equals 1 and here is my first indice ki equals 0 to infinity 1 over p to the is actually the geometric sum says that 1 over 1 minus x is equal to 1 plus x to x uh, add x squared add x cubed and so forth and you see this we are adding this ki starting at 0 goes to infinity so we are adding actually 1 plus 1 over pi to the s plus 1 over p to the is and this squared then cubed and so forth okay so now in the next step what I'm doing I'm just taking this ki and taking it to the power so we don't have to use the brackets all the time now the next step is a little bit confusing so I'll just rewrite it like this I'm taking this product and writing it out like this okay so this is I equals 1 I everywhere where I is written I will write a 1 1 1 here 2 2 2 and so forth okay this is a product now what I will do is if you have such a product then you can do a little trick you can take all 
uh, not, this is not a pro okay we have a product of sums and what you can do then is you take the sum the first sum the second and so forth you take all the sums and then write all their factors because if I would have written this this way uh, for example if um, we only have um, large n prime numbers okay then I could re take all these parts out because the last part would be um, k n equals 0 to infinity and these parts do not have a k of n so I can take them out and you could do this until you would get this representation I hope you understood that and now here comes the next deal here is a little uh, manipulation that I did also I took th this s out of the brackets okay now you will understand maybe better and now let's look at this thing here what we have here we have p the first prime number to k1 which is just an arbitrary number naturally it will go through 0 to infinity this is going to uh, from 0 to infinity this is going from uh, 0 to infinity and as we have infinitely many primes and you can just go ahead and do this infinitely often okay now this is uh, a little bit strange thing but this is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic okay now what it states is if you have a natural number n okay then it is possible to write n as a product of primes okay with corresponding powers okay and important this representation is unique actually if you write it down it looks like this okay and uh, the product sign is actually not needed okay you can just leave this out this is an error and this is n equals p of the prime one to k one and so forth and you would go ahead until n of small n which states that this is the largest prime number in n I give you an example. For example, if you have, uh, let's say, 18, okay, then you can write 18 as what? 2 times 9, okay? 2 is a prime number, so we can write 2 to the first power, okay? So k1 would be 1. And 9 can be written as 3, which is the second prime number, to the second power. And this representation is unique. This is very important. So you cannot write a number in another way than this okay there is only one representation now if we look at this we have this in the denominator so actually what we are doing with this thing here is we are summing over all integers okay we are summing over all integers here because this will give you uh, for special k1 k2 for example if k1 k2 and uh, all the parts are equal to zero then we will get the number one okay then if only this is equal to one and all the others are zero then we get one over two okay and one over two to the s will give you one over two to the s so this is the second part in the zeta function remember in the sum then if you would uh, go ahead and want to have uh, 1 over 3 to the uh, s so you would have to make all others 0 and only this being equal to 1 and you would have 1 over 3 to the s and so forth so you can construct and for example 4 would be all uh, these things are equal uh, to 0 and this is equal to k is equal to 2 so you would have 1 over 4 uh, 1 over 4 to the s okay so you can construct all the numbers out of this thing and if we write this down what we are actually getting is we are summing over all integer numbers with the power of s and this is actually the zeta function this is what we want to derive I hope uh, you could follow these arguments it's a pretty hard proof and we will actually learn in the next video how to prove this easier okay and if you like my videos please subscribe and See you guys.